leftist Christians claim socialism is compatible with the Bible. In fact, they say it's even more biblical than our present government. You know, God would be a socialist, we are told. So if we want to be good Christians, we should embrace socialism too. Hmm, let's think about this. Uh, no. To start off, what is socialism exactly? According to Merriam-Webster, socialism is defined as any of various economic and political theories advocating collective or governmental ownership and administration of the means of production and distribution of goods. So, there is no private property, and the government, not the people, owns or controls the economy. Well, how does it hold up to say the Ten Commandments, the basis of our Judeo-Christian faith? That should be our first test. Any good political system should affirm at least the Ten Commandments, right? That's like God's Ten Rules for Life on Earth. Hmm, let's see. The very first commandment states, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Socialism violates the very first commandment. You see, in a socialist system, the state basically becomes God. It is the state we look to, to give us our rights, our freedoms, our livelihoods, our jobs, our meals, our education, our health care. That is, if there's any of that to go around once the government takes it over. There is no appealing to a higher authority because the state is the end all and be all. But as Christians, we don't serve the government, we serve God. God is our Heavenly Father and our ultimate authority. Our inalienable rights come from Him, and it is the state that must conform to His natural law. It is not surprising then that socialist and communist countries have tended to be atheistic and the worship of God has been replaced with the worship of government. Instead of worshipping the one and only God, it is the leaders of these regimes that are revered as saviors and gods in their respective countries. The Eighth Commandment says, Thou shalt not steal. But what is the basis of a socialist government? Stealing, theft. Or as Frederick Bastiat, the 19th century French economist, called it, legal plunder. When one thinks about the idea of plunder, one may conjure up images of pirates plundering ships and victims of war plundering the defeated. But have you ever thought of socialism as basically plunder? Now I'm not saying that those who get things from the government are guilty of it. No, the state itself has taken on the role of the thief. It takes the property of those who earned it and gives it to those who did it. It legalizes it, legitimizes it, and anyone who opposes this legal plunder through taxation or outright confiscation of private property is an enemy of the socialist state. However, God has told us not to steal. That presupposes and affirms the right of private property. Government should protect our right to the fruits of our labor, not take it from us. The Tenth Commandment says, Thou shalt not covet. That means no, we should not feel it is our right to have other people's stuff. But socialists even tell us to feel good about our covetousness. Socialism encourages jealousy, envy, and strife between the rich and poor. It paints those who have more than us as the bad guys, that somehow they owe us something. Now it may be easier for us to think of ourselves as victims if we don't have what other people have, but socialists are exploiting our natural, though sinful desire to covet and elevates it. But God has expressly told us not to do that. So how can socialism be compatible with the Bible? when it violates three of God's most basic commandments. It can't. And we know that God doesn't contradict himself in his word. So no, the Bible does not support a socialist, political, or economic system. So as a Christian, no, I cannot embrace socialism.